Okay, everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Floris Brockerbank, aka the Classics Guy, and today we are going to be talking about funerary rites. So, the first thing that's really important to discuss is just the nature of death and afterlife in ancient Greece. So, the view was that death um, was a normal and natural process. Um, so, death constituted going from the world of the living to the world of the dead. The dead, the, or the, un the world of the dead was called the underworld, um, also known as Hades, after Hades himself, the god who was the, who was the god of the underworld. So the underworld was an area deep underground where these souls effectively rested. Um, its nature, however, is unclear. For example, we don't there were, there were many divergent views as to whether there were separate destinations for those who were good and those who, who were bad. However, one thing that we do know is that to descend to the underworld meant that the soul, psyche um, in Greek, had to separate from the physical body. Okay, the first part of the funerary ritual was the preparation of the body. So the body was washed, we still do that today. The body was anointed with oil. The body was then dressed. It was dressed in different clothes depending on social status. For example, very well-off citizens might be dressed in purple silk gowns, etc., while more kind of ordinary citizens might be dressed in sort of white, white kind of cloth. So less special. A wreath would be placed on the chest. Um, and what's important to note is that this was done exclusively by women. We don't know exactly why, possibly because women represent purity or because these were kind of domestic tasks um, and women were, were more associated with domestic tasks than men. Um, and the preparation of the body marked the first part of the prothesis. So on the right here, we have an attic white ground lekythos, which was for funerary use. Um, this a lekythos was a container or a vase um, used for, con for containing oil. So it would be it, it would contain this special oil that was used to anoint the body. And actually, this one is 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 quite nice because the iconography on the the vase depicts a scene. Um, from the funerary rituals. So you, for example, you have this kind of apparent mourning person um, st adjacent to this funerary steel. Okay, so the second part of the prothesis um, is when the body is laid out for public viewing. Um, so when the body is 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 placed in for, um, in the public eye. Um, you know, people come around the body, stand around it, and, and join together in a state of mourning. And this is again done by women. They will sing dirges, which are, were songs of lament. Um, and Homer, for example, describes this mourning in a physical way. For example, he describes women as beating their breasts and tearing at their hair. Um, so this, this idea of mourning features heavily in um, ancient literature. They would also wear dark clothing. That's obviously not kind of that crazy. I mean, we just do that today and is, again, a sign of mourning. Okay, so next we have the ekphora. The ekphora is effectively the funeral, the funeral procession. Um, so it, it, it involved bringing the body from the home to the burial place, the final resting place of the body. So, you know, the cemetery, such as the Kerameikos in Athens. It would be carried or put on, put in a carriage, depending on, again, social status and wealth. And the ekphra tended to go through public places so that people, just random citizens, could join the line of mourners and pay their respects. Again, further signs of grief um, were important and featured heavily in the ekphra. Um, so another thing that's important to note is that the ekphora always happened before dawn on the third day, so that by it by the time the body reached the final burial place, um, it the sun had already come up. In fact, I just want to draw your attention to this 
this image on the right, it's, it's a fiala, which is a um, traditional bowl for the pouring of libations. So, now we're going on to the burial. The, the Greeks practiced two types of burial, inhumation and cremation. In, inhumation is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it just involved the body being buried as a whole. Or cremation involved the body being burnt on a funeral pyre and the remains were then collected in an urn that could in turn be buried in the ground. Okay. So cremation was actually favored by the ancient Greeks because it was more expensive and so was considered, I guess, quote unquote, more prestigious. Um, the body was then placed in, 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 in the grave as it, as it is still to this day. Um, and then you'd have grave markers like stelae or marble statues to just denote the place where this body is, is, was, was buried. So, for example, here on the right, we have a, a really famous um, grave marker. It's, it's a really famous steel, steel funerary steel, and it depicts... Um, it's called the Steel of Hegeso, and it depicts um, a young woman with her maiden being handed um, a kind of um, a jewellery box. Um, that's a jewellery box is a pilex. Um, also, in some special cases, for the very, very wealthy of the ancient Greeks, uh, mausoleums might be built. So a mausoleum is just a very big kind of funerary edifice. Okay, so lastly, we have the peridapnon, or the feast. This was effectively a banquet in honor of the deceased person, and a time for gathering of, of, of everybody who knew that deceased person. It was considered an important part of the funeral, and features heavily in ancient literature. So, for example, in, um, a very famous example of the peridapnon is, comes in the Iliad. At the very end of the Iliad, um, King Priam asks... Achilles to have the body to to to, to have the body of um, Hector um, because he wants to hold you know a, a feast in his honor. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please, guys, stay tuned for more videos. Like and subscribe as always, and um, I'll catch you later.